Hey guys, thought I would uh, give you an update on how things are going with the crack key seed starting system. This is round two, and a bunch of plants have already been taken from here out to my larger system outside, my uh, indoor vertical farm. Uh, things are growing a little bit slow out there. We had a couple of warm days, but it's been mostly in the 40s in my garage. And uh, given I have to take that system apart in just, what is it now? Ooh, it's kind of scary to think about. Uh, 12 days, 13, 11 days. I have to take that apart, load it up in a van and take it down to Belton for the mother earth news festival. The last thing I wanted to do is build it indoors. So, um, just dealing with the slower growth out there, but as you can see, things are going well. I did have some things not germinate and I'm trying some different things with things that are tough to germinate. Um, as always, I keep everything on these little grid sheets. So I know what's germinating, what's not, how long it's taking, what's doing well etc. Let's talk a little bit about how things are going here. Um, let's start with some successes and I'll tell you what that is in, in a minute. Um, right here in the front and the first two rows, these are red vein sorrel. They were actually relocated from up top um, to clear that space up there. So that's another reason a lot of plants went outside is just to uh, let me get that biodome we'll talk about in a second up there. But my red vein sorrel is really doing well and I'm very excited about this. Uh, I've always had trouble getting red vein sorrel to grow in uh, significant numbers. Once you get a nice clump of it, you can divide it every year. It's a perennial, it's like a weed, you can't kill it. But starting it from seeds has always been kind of tough for me. I, I don't really know why. Um, I have a 100% success rate with germination and grow out. And I want to show you, these plants are just over two weeks in the system. And they all have nice little roots coming out and I expect over the next week for those roots to really start to kind of branch out. Now this is more of a taproot plant anyway though. Um, but yeah, it's, it's doing really well. I was, you know, can I use this to start my peppers and tomatoes? So I don't know what I'm going to do with those dozen pepper plants back there. Um, it's going to be hard to find a place for them to exist. Uh, we still have, we have snow forecasted for Wednesday, for instance. Um, but, you know, maybe I'll just throw them out in the garden under a row cover a couple, three weeks from now and just see how it works out. But those are Anchos, Marconi, and I can't remember the um, Cuban House. And they are all doing really well. The the group in the center that's really kind of growing faster than everybody else, those are the giant Marconis. Tam Jalapeno, my go-to heirloom that I grow every year. I grow some of the best jalapenos in the world, in my opinion. I had zero germination. I have some in the biodome. Again, we'll talk about that in a bit. I don't know why they didn't germinate. Generally speaking, if something doesn't germinate well, it, the whole species doesn't germinate well. Um, some lettuces back there, and you can see some uh, basil. Basil's doing really well. Uh, in there, I believe I have a couple fennels that are late to the party that I'm trying to see how fennel will uh, germinate in here. Same with the back row. Uh, that lettuce, let's see. It's, Actually, since I know, I want to tell you what you're looking at. That red lettuce back there, that's positions 10, 11, and 12 on board two. Pomegranate crunch. That's turning into one of my all-stars for hydroponic lettuce. Uh, that's a pelleted variety that you can get as well, so it's really easy to plant one seed per container. That's doing really well. Down here, you see the little sprout thingies there in those cups? That is cilantro. I have had zero success with cilantro. Somebody told me to use the paper towel trick with cilantro, but to go further, to once the seeds were softened, to actually split them in apart because there's actually two seeds inside each coriander. You can see that one there, just starting to send out a rootlet. So what I'm doing is these root, I'm dropping them into there. We'll see how that works. I've also dropped some in there. Again, we'll come back to that. But that's what that is. Um, those two guys there are uh, garden crests wrinkled crest. And what I found out with these guys is I need to transplant them very soon. Once they get about twice that size, they don't like the heat in this system. They're a cool weather crop and they start to look really unhappy. Uh, so it's fine for germinating, but that's not something you really need to be starting in a hydro seed starting system. Anyway, that stuff grows like crazy. Uh, I think in the outdoor system, they'll do really well down here, a bunch of different lettuces. Let's give you at least the first three since they all look well. You can have one failure to germinate in the back on that second red variety. So let me look this up for you. The first variety, board four, uh, I relocated that. I translocated lettuce, that was arugula. We moved it all outside. So where did that come from? That came from up top. That's Buckley red oak leaf. 
Um, so that's what that is. The third one back there is Coastal Star. And that second one is Zrilla, Z-R-I-L-L-A. That's done really well. Got some spinach and stuff back there. Doing the paper towel trick with spinach has completely solved that issue. I can grow all the spinach I want this way now for hydro. Uh, about three or four days on a paper towel in a plastic bag and it comes up. Stuff right in front of you there. Oh, you know what? I was wrong. Hold on. That's Brentwood lettuce, that front lettuce. 16, 17, 18, sorry. Then that's Hampton lettuce. And then New Red Fire. Yeah, the New Red Fire has done really well everywhere I've grown that. That makes a lot more sense to me now. Uh, this stuff right here in the front uh, was arugula. Now it is yadfa. That's the Chinese broccoli, Chinese kale. Call it what you want to. And we got some other lettuces back there. Magenta is what's in the very back. And more Coastal Star in the interim. So all of these different lettuce varieties seem to do really well in here. I mean, Hydro is just great for growing lettuce. Um, basil doing really well doesn't grow as fast as some of the lettuces or the other plants but um, i'm really looking forward to being able to have fresh basil through the winter uh once this uh whole process kind of kicks off there's some larger basil back there doing a little bit better in that pan all right so let's talk about the biodome i learned about this from a guy that's been just immensely helpful on my podcast uh blog and his name is Oki Jim or Oki James or something like that. And he said that he didn't have any problem germinating the celery that I had recommended from Baker Creek. And I had gotten very poor, poor germination with it. It's a Chinese white celery. He said he only put two plugs in, but he got 100% on, on celery. That's impressive to me. This is made by Parks. Uh, maybe I'll do a standalone video where I actually show you exactly how it works. But it's not rocket science or anything. This is a, a foam. And it's a I, I don't remember what it's made out of. Because uh, Parks did not include the freaking manual that's supposed to come with this with it. Fortunately, you don't have to be very smart to figure it out. Um, so it does. I don't have the material that's made of, but it is a foam that's not like your typical styrofoam. It's not going to come apart. It's not going to break down. It's sealed, uh, that type of thing. And those little plugs, they go into each slot. This holds 60 per side. So this, you know, I'm doing 30 a tray. This will do 120, and it doesn't even take up the whole shelf. The bad news is these are about full price when you pay shipping and everything, about 60 bucks. Where one of these is, I've got maybe 10 bucks in that. You know, if, at the most, because there's the both trays, the foam board, the net, if you're counting the net cups, which are reusable. Um, so it could cost more, but you could do, you know, with a system like this, you know, 120 a level, 240, what? Five, uh, 580 uh, plants in that rack however you're not only if you're using that dense density you're only going to be able to grow so many of them uh, grow them so far out before they're going to have to transplant where as you can see we can grow a rather large plant in the system i've designed these are 60 cell i believe they come in 40 cell and 20 cell as well so if you went through the 20 cells you'd be 40 you'd have plenty of room to grow out and you'd still have more room but you're going to have a bigger investment in you're also kind of locked into these little plugs. The good news about these little plugs, even the larger ones, cost less than the rapid rooters that I use. So they're not a couple of pennies less, but they don't cost more. That's that's kind of an advantage there um, with that as well. And this is designed for seed starting. Had I known about this, I probably would have started using at least one of these from the very beginning. Uh, I'll have a link to where you can pick these up on Amazon. Uh, but splitting the difference, you might find that on Amazon, it's a little more or a little less expensive than Parks, depending on the options you pick. It's it, They're like that close to each other. I ordered direct from Parks, and it was mainly because I wanted this thing now. And uh, the shipping on Amazon, which is usually super fast, was kind of like iffy about when it was coming. And Parks was like, we'll ship within the next 48 hours. So I ordered direct. So you can make that decision for yourself if you want to try all one of these. The way this stuff works, it comes with some of its own fertilizer. And I'm going to go ahead and use it the way that it's designed to be used. And basically, you just, if you look down there in the bottom, you can see there's water. And these float. So this is a floating system. And they wick water up. These are made with peat and some other things spun into them. Uh, they seem quite durable. I've only had it set up for three days now. Uh, so I have no real opinion on how good or bad this is, except that the guy that recommended it to me uh, has been an immense help. And if he says that, he owns like five of them. He watches eBay, picks them up, used, etc. If he says they work, I have no doubt that they would work really, really well. That's why I went ahead and got one. So that's where we're at right now. Um, as far as what I have in there, I decided to try to do some things 
that I'm having trouble germinating in the other trays to see not only does it work, but how much better does it work, and frankly, how much more lettuce do I need right now? Um, so I've got white celery in there. I've got the tam jalapenos in there, just three of them, just to see. Uh, it, again, it's really odd to me, if you look at those peppers, those peppers are about 16 days old. They look better than any pepper uh, start that I've ever grown in dirt in my life. I've never had one at 15, 16 days look that good and be that big. And remember, the color there looks a little weird. That's the lights. Uh, they are dark, green, happy plants. Uh, again, if you look back, the roots on the, the pepper roots, look at that. Those guys are happy. I've had people ask me, how do you, how do you transplant this into soil? Well, it's not hard. Dig a hole about as deep as those roots, hold the plant at the soil level by the stalk, and gently fill the dirt in. I've also had people say, well, look, see how those, those two are growing together? It's a perfect example right there. Look at that's growing together. How are you going to get that apart? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that didn't seem that hard. Um, I guess if you grow full-size mature plants, you could get enough root tangling where it's really hard to get them apart. I've had no trouble getting them apart. And since I started cutting out you can see how those are cut out, larger holes in the net pots. Any plant that I've wanted to put in soil has popped right out of there. Maybe it, you know, a stray root or two, but my transplant results have been fantastic. So I don't know why, again, those tam jalapenos, it's weird to me that your other... Now, I, the other thing is I'm using seed. I tried, instead of using safe seed, for my trials, I've used 100% seed from reputable seed houses. And I got all the pepper seeds from the same place. And I'll tell you who it is because I don't expect that anybody would think this is negative of them because they're one of my favorite seed houses, uh, Johnny's. Uh, all four pepper varieties came from Johnny's Selected Seeds and it just the Tam didn't. So I've got those guys in there. Um, I've got some Italian parsley in there because I've had very poor germination results with parsley uh, in a standard system. I've got some spinach in there without doing the, the paper towel trick just to see, like, does that solve the problem? Uh, I've got some curled parsley again because I've had some parsley issues. I've got uh, six cells full of fennel because I love fennel and I have did, did not start the fennel down there when I started everything else so I'm not sure if the fennel is easy to germinate hard to germinate yet but I love fennel and it's a great spring crop here uh, some red basil just because um, and some cilantro and sorrel uh, so we'll see how all of that does and again we have plenty more space to grow um, I'm trying to hold back right now because again I'm, I'm producing plants I can't put in the ground for another six weeks and it takes me, you know, it used to take me six to eight weeks to get a pepper plant uh, ready to go on the ground. Here I've got, you know, pepper plants less than three weeks old. I have bought pepper plants in six packs from nurseries that were not that big when I bought them. I would actually like that plant to be a little bit bigger before I put it out in my garden, but I would not hesitate, especially the ones that are in the second row. I would not hesitate to plant those. I am completely sold on this method of seed starting. Again, I've heard from people that say, but you know, it's not going to transplant. Well, I've done other videos. You can take a look at my channel where I have plants that came straight out of here, went straight out into my garden. They're under row covers out there in the harsh winter right now. They're doing beautifully. And I didn't even treat them nice. It was before I started trimming the net cups and I just threw them in one of these buckets like this and I forgot about them for like six hours. And they were not, and they, they recovered fine. So if you actually put some care and thought and uh, do a good job with your plants, I can't see that this won't work well for you. The other thing this is for, for me, is growing for other hydro systems. So since they're in two inch net cups, I can take them out, leave them in the cup and just drop them into a larger outdoor system. So sold on this. I saw a lot of people on Facebook this weekend uh, with weekend projects putting this little rack together. These racks are 30 bucks. My God, guys, that is one of the best $30 investments I've ever made in my life. When you take it out, it has hundreds of parts is what it seems like, because each one of these poles they go through here, see all those poles and down here and all that stuff. There's like, that's a, it just it adds up to have that many of them. You don't need any tools. You just piece it, you just push it together. This is a half beer job, uh, put it in a beer thing. Uh, the only thing that, if you didn't see the other video that maybe has a little bit of difficulty, your top system, if you want to put lights in, there's really nothing to affix the lights to. If you see down here, you fix the lights to the wire rack. All I did was I ran some uh, fen electrical fencing wire. So this is the wire that you use to run electrical current through, you know, stand it off your fence to keep uh, you know, predators away from your critters and stuff like that. Uh, I saw a guy, he took some dowels, some wooden dowels, and just tie wrapped them and then tie wrapped uh, Anything would work. Um, I used the wire because I had it, and I know that it'll last forever. Um, hell of a deal. And then these lights. These are the Barina lights. I have bought countless different plant lights in my life. 
I've used everything from T5s and, and, and stuff like the shop lights. I've used very expensive lights. I've used cheap lights. These are like, a, I would call them a, the best deal on lights that I have found. Six of these lights, so that's two rows. If you're using three a row and two will work, I've just found three works better. But six lights, 60 bucks. That's $10 a light for a two foot uh, T5 replacement. I mean, that is that is amazing to me. Better power, better function, better everything. And uh, the four footers are six for 90 bucks, I think is what they work out. So I'll have links for everything that I use in my systems in the video notes. If you have any questions about this system, if you'd like to know more, if there's something you'd like me to try, if you have any suggestions, et cetera, you know what to do, put them in the comments below and I'll do what I can to answer you. I always try to answer every comment I get that at least seems like it's a question or wants an answer. I don't get to all of them, but I try hard. And if you like this video and you wanna know more about you know, taking care of yourself, taking care of plants, growing uh, real ecological things that actually make a difference, things like that, hey, subscribe and hit the little bell and uh, you'll get an email every time I put a new video up. Take care.